Basketball has a rhythm to it. Uh, the dribbling of the ball, squeak of the sneakers, swish of the net. Um, so me and my brother Carl, my little brother Carl, we have our own little uh, little rhythm. And it goes swish, boom, boom. And then sometimes, great job, or good shit. But other times, come on, bro, you gotta follow through. <laughs> this all started when I was 12, um, and my, my brother was nine, and he decided he wanted to go to Temple Basketball Camp. Um, I wasn't super enthused about the idea, but I was the older brother, and so I was conscripted uh, to go to Philadelphia for the week to play basketball uh, with my brother. And we came back super hooked. I mean, just be watching YouTube videos, trying to sign up for new shooting clinics, um, and shooting hundreds of shots just like that. Swish, boom, boom. Swish, boom, boom. Come on, bro. Follow through. <laughs> we were the perfect training partners uh, because he was tall for his age, and I was, well, not. Um, <laughs> uh, and eventually, after I'd been cut from a couple of my own teams, I started just going to his own his practices. Um, helping his coaches coach and run drills. Um, and so basketball games, Carl's basketball games, became a family event. Right? So my dad would drive, my mom would make sure that we packed everything, and we didn't forget Carl, uh, and my nana would uh, scream, Oh my gosh, go Carl! <laughs> and wait for Pom Pom. Uh, and we went to almost every game. Uh, while we were kids. Um, and so I distinctly remember when I went for my freshman year of college, um, how strange it felt not to be going to these games. It almost felt like my job was finished, that um, you know, as my brother had grown literally and figuratively into one of the best young players on his team, that now there were new coaches um, to help him progress more than, than I could. And it felt like a chapter of our life had ended. Um, but then we had, uh, we call in basketball, a bad bounce um, in April of 2015 when I was diagnosed with cancer. And that was, that's a story for another day and another time. But the important thing was that I had to come home. I could no longer stay at college. I could no longer really do things by, by myself. Um, and so it went kind of as you'd expect. My brother and I started training basketball all the time again. Um, I was balling shit, I had little tubes coming out of my chest, and I was working on lefty layups because I couldn't use my right hand. And Carl was, of course, shooting fadeaway three-pointers, and uh, and one time actually crossing me up so bad that he thought he killed me because I <laughs> fell in slow motion and slid on the on the concrete, and um, I was a mean press at the time, so luckily I'm still here. But, uh, it ended up being one of the great silver linings of uh, being sick was that I got to be home and I got to spend that time with him and go to his games again. Um, there was one time over the summer where he just played incredible. He locked down the best defender on the team. He ran the offense, passing to people, um, and even though I had to stand or I had to sit in the corner with a mask on, kind of away from everybody. Um, I got to be there for that. Um, that, was, that was really special. But then, um, in October, um, on some strange night, I, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I had to go to the ER, um, as sometimes does when you have cancer. Um, and my brother came home uh, from practice and was like, hey, I'm going to need to go to the hospital because he'd, he'd broken his ankle um, in that practice, and if you're following along, if you break your ankle in basketball in October, that means that you're going to miss the entire season. And so he missed his entire junior season um, rehabbing uh, for this injury. And so we were devastated. Um, not only was Carl now injured, and my parents didn't really have time for him because they were spending all their time trying to help me get better, but basketball, which had been this great escape for him, was suddenly gone. Right, a moment where he was able, when he was playing basketball, he was able to forget, you know, worrying about his brother or his parents. Um, 
and I was just gone. It sucked. Fast forward a year, and we were on the mend. Got a new basketball coach, he's a senior now, uh, and they installed this new defense where they funneled all these players uh, towards Carl. He actually set a record for the number of charges uh, taken in a season for, for a high school, it was like 102 or something. At one point, he had this, this pouch of fluid on his arm from being hit in the chest and falling on his back so many times. Um, and it was amazing. They played so well, and they won the most games in 10 years, and they made the, playoff, they made the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. But my brother is one of their, their two stars. Um, but then it happened again. Three days before, um, three days before his playoff game, he sprained his ankle because some kid was going around in layup lines, and that was it. There was no miracle comeback. They lost the game. There was no injection of deer antler juice to like make his ankle better. <laughs> There's just a kid unable to do what we practiced for so long down that cul-de-sac to follow through. My brother doesn't really play basketball anymore. He's hurt his ankle too many times. And he lives a super beautiful adult life, the kind that any parent would hope that their child would be able to have. Um, and I too feel my basketball mortality with every hip, shoulder, knee, ankle that I hurt. I know that I'm moving closer to the day that comes for all of us where we all will no longer be able to play basketball. But basketball is more than an activity for my family. When I call my Nana, we talk about Fran Dunphy coaching LaSalle and Temple, Aaron McKee is coaching Temple, and whether or not we think the new freshmen are any good. And when I call my dad, we talk about Terry's Maxi and the Sixers and whether or not we're going to do well in the playoffs. And when I call my brother, we talk about the NBA, LeBron, the Stanford Women's basketball team and dream of one day coaching together if we're ever in the same place again. Basketball will always connect us. Even though we're on different coasts and see each other only two to three times a year, every day, you can find me, well, weekday, <laughs> you can find me at 8.30 in the morning, shooting baskets, swish, boom, boom. And I don't feel I don't and I don't feel so far away. Thank you. <laughs>